In this video, we're going to use data mapping in Nexus modifiers to procedurally animate particle properties like radius. We'll explore how the graph works and how you can manipulate it for different effects. In our scene then we have an emitter here and we are in shot hexagonal mode with static particles and that's giving us this nice distribution of particles and we are going to be demonstrating the basics the fundamentals of data mapping now this can be done with any of the modifiers and the dynamic objects in nexus and in x particles as well we're going to be demonstrating it with this nx scale modifier and um, we'll be looking at this a little bit later but you can see that we've got these multicolored particles that is because we have three particle groups here particle group three two and one and if we go to the emitter groups tab you can see that this emitter is using all three of those groups and it's set to random mode so just when particles are born they're randomly put in one of those three groups and we can clearly see the group here um, from the colors so let's have a look at our data mapping let's say that we want to scale up our particles over time let's go to our nx scale object tab now we are in a set value mode at the moment and we're setting the radius of our particles to 60 centimeters so every particle is 60 centimeters but let's say we wanted to map this value over time so when particles were born they had none of this and as they get older they gradually get bigger and bigger until they reach this amount of 60 well let's get that set up go to mapping and first of all we need to add a layer and what we're going to do is add a layer according to the particle age because we want to scale them up over time um, so let's do particle age so the first thing we need to set is what is the parameter that you want to map to the particle age well we've already looked at that let's go back to our object tab we want to map the radius value don't we to the particle age so we need to look out for this parameter name let's go back to mapping and under the parameter we need to look out for that yep look there it is radius value let's click on that the map to is automatically set to age because we brought an age layer in but if you wanted to change it to one of the other particle data types you can let's leave it on age and then by default with an age layer we have a min and max range set at zero frames and 30 frames so we can adjust this and i'll show you that a little bit later but this range this is mapped to the x-axis of this control spline here with the minimum uh, range being here on x0 and this maximum range in this instance 30 frames is here on x position 1 Let's put that back and then on this y-axis of our uh, range mapping curve is our parameter the radius value and what these y position um, values do is they they multiply the radius value that we have set so if we just go back to our object tab we've set the radius value at 60 centimeters so if we go back to the mapping tab with a y position of zero so right at the bottom of that y-axis um, particles will have a radius value of 60 times zero which is nothing so they won't have any size at all and this is happening at when particles are zero frames old and as they get older they're getting more and more radius value until they reach 30 frames old because this is 30 frames on our x-axis and at 30 frames old they will receive one times 60 centimeters radius value which is 60 and then they'll just keep that for the rest of their life so let's have a look we should have particles born with nothing and gradually getting bigger until they get to 30 frames old yep and then they're 60 centimeters cool 
So if we increase this range max, let's say to 100 frames, now this x-axis is from zero frames old all the way to 100 frames old. So particles don't get their full radius value of 60 until they're 100 frames. Let's have a look. The rate of growth should be slower. Yep. And we get to 100 frames and now they are 60 frames old. Cool. So what we can um, discern from this, if we right click and do spline presets linear, now if we make a knot here, hold control, click and make this knot. And let's just make sure that we've got the appropriate values. So we're going to pull down this arrow and this knot, we're going to give it an X position of 0.5 and we're going to give it a Y position of 0.5. So what this is saying is that particles that are 50 frames old, because this entire range is 100 frames, so at 0.5 it must be 50 frames old, they will have a 0.5 times 60 centimetres radius value, which is 30. And if we bring this forward at frame 50, they will have a radius value of 30. 30 centimeters so that's how we can read this um, uh, range mapping spline we map the parameter to the y-axis and we map the range min range max to the x-axis and that gives us the idea of um, uh, the control of how we animate our particles so if we just put this back to maybe a cubic spline you can see that the particle growth over its age is going to grow really slowly at first and then it's going to start growing up to the full 60 centimeters at the end of that 100 frames. So let's have a look. We should have a, a kind of a fade in of growth. Yeah, it's starting slow and then it gets quick. Very cool. And so we can use different spline shapes and um, types to get different effects. So now we've inverted this spline. It's saying that when the particle is zero frames old, it will have the full scale value, the full radius value of 60. And as it gets older, it gets smaller and smaller. And by the time it gets to 100 frames old, it'll have no radius value. Let's have a look. And yeah, that's doing exactly what we think cool so that is very useful let's put that spline preset back to uh, linear so now let's look at another scenario that may be slightly more difficult to get your head around what we'll do is just delete out that age and what we want to do is scale these particles according to which group they are in which we can do so let's go to our list and bring in a group layer now, we again need to get the right parameter. We want to map that radius value, don't we? So let's pick radius value here. We're mapping it to group. Now, here is where we need to get the range, min, and max correct. Before, we were doing frames because we were doing particle age. Now, this range, min, and max refers to the group numbers. Now, we don't have a group zero. We have a group one, two, and three. So the min is group one and the max is group three and now this is exactly the same our group numbers are mapped to this x axis with zero on the x being group one with one on the x that will equate to group three the last particle in our range and group two will be, let's put another knot in, will be exactly at x.5. Now, the difference with groups and with age is that there is no in-between groups. Particles can't be in between group one and two. They are either in group one, group two, or group three. So all of these parts of our curves, which are before and after the points, are irrelevant when we're just dealing with these integers where there's no in between so now what we can do is we can adjust the scale of our different particles so you can see look what have we got well particles in group one the blue particles 
that's this knot here, they have 0% of our radius value. So they're invisible, and that's correct in our viewport look. Our green particles, group 2, which is this knot, have 50% of our radius value. So they are uh, not quite 50. Look, let's put that on 0.5. They are 30 centimeters in radius. And our particles in group 3 on this knot, which have all of our radius value, have a radius, a radius value of 60. So we can make adjustments to this. Let's make sure our blue ones have a little bit of radius. So now we can see them. And look, we can bring those pink ones down to make them smaller. Increase those blue ones, uh, the green ones, sorry. So we have got this, um, uh, the ability to map our radius value to the groups. But when we're doing it like this, the in-between parts of this curve are irrelevant because particles can't be between groups. They are either in one or the other, which means only the exact position of these knots is relevant. So that's how we set up and use data mapping with our range mapping graph. And the main thing to take away is that the range is always across the x-axis of our spline, and the parameter that you are mapping is on the y.